Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video we're gonna study about floor plans. And here's one typical one, let's say this is a room, and it is written on your plan on paper, so it is only 3.2 cm by 4.8 cm. And then the plan has a scale ratio that tells us how big it will be in reality. In this case the scale is 1 to 100, so that means that one unit here is actually 100 of those units in reality. So one centimeter in the plan would be 100 centimeters in reality. And now the task is this time to calculate the area of this room in reality. To do that we of course first need to find these side lengths in reality. So let's do that. If this measures 3.2 centimeters in the plan, in reality it is 100 times that much. So we calculate 100 times 3.2 centimeters. Okay, 100 times 3 would be 300, so this is 320 centimeters, which is 3.2 meters. And then the other one, 4.8 centimeters times 100, or 100 times 4.8 centimeters will be 480 centimeters, which is 4.8 meters. And now we just calculate the area by multiplying 3.2 meters times 4.8 meters. And now a calculator. Okay, with the calculator I get it is 15.36 square meters. So this was a pretty simple problem because the scale was easy, 1 to 100. Over here we have a scale of 1 inch to 3 feet. And this is now the room in reality, because the measurements are in feet. Our task is to calculate if it was drawn on a floor plan, how many inches will this room be on paper. And whenever your scale is 1 to something, 1 to some number, then you simply either multiply or divide by this other number. So in this case we can just take this and either multiply or divide by 3, and then our answer will be in inches. You can think of it this way. Each 3 feet here will correspond to 1 inch on paper. So we need to find out how many times 3 feet fits into 16 feet. So I'll calculate here 16 and divide it by 3 and your answer will be then in inches. And this is a mixed number, it is 5 and 1 third of an inch. Okay. And then the other one would be just 10 over 3 inches, which is 3 and 1 third of an inch. Okay, now your ruler won't have 1 third of an inch, so you need to choose a fraction that is close to it, such as 3 eighths. 3 eighths of an inch is close to 1 third of an inch, if you're actually drawing it. I'll also show you another way to solve this, which is to use a proportion, because we have a ratio here, and then this side and the corresponding side are in the same ratio, they are in proportion. So this is my one ratio which is 1 inch to 3 feet, paper to reality, and so the reality is 16 feet and the paper is unknown, so this is our proportion to solve it, and then you would get 3 feet times x equals 1 inch times 16 feet. 3 feet times x equals 1 inch times 16 feet. And now divide both sides by 3 feet, so x equals 1 inch times 16 feet divided by 3 feet. Of course this feet, the units cancel out, so you have 16 divided by 3 once again, and you get one, 5 and 1 third of an inch. The same result. Over here I chose some fractions, so we get used to dealing with fractions too. The scale is 1 to 90, and this is of course on paper. Now we will calculate the dimensions in real life. And since one unit corresponds to 90 units in reality, then we multiply by 90 to get bigger amounts. And whenever it is a fraction, you can use fraction math, but I like decimals better for multiplying. They are easier to put into your calculator too. So let's change this 2 and 1 eighth of an inch into decimal. It would be 2.125, right? 
and then that is in inches, and we multiply it by 90. Okay, and you use your calculator to get this. And it will be 191.25 inches. So that's how long the room is in reality. However, you probably want to change this into feet. And to do that, since there's 12 inches in one foot, you divide this number by 12. Okay, and then you will get feet. And this will be 15.9375 feet. And then there's one more thing that you might want to do, which is, instead of saying 15 point so many feet, maybe you want to convert it to 15 feet and so many inches. And to do that, you need to figure out this decimal part here, how many inches is it going to be. Okay, so you take the decimal part alone and multiply it by 12 to get how many inches it is going to be. And you will get 11.25 inches. So, all in all, we will get that this side measures 15 feet and 11 and 1 fourth of an inch. And you would repeat all these steps for this other side also. Here we have a scale drawing or a floor plan of a room and we're gonna change this. It is in the scale of 1 to 50 but if you wanted to use a different scale, such as 1 to 80, then what would you do? Now, first of all, when we change from this scale to another scale where this number is bigger, then will this actually get bigger or smaller? This is where one unit here corresponds with 50 units in reality. And over here, one unit corresponds with 80 units in reality. And it means this will be smaller, okay? When we draw it on paper, it will be smaller because each unit here will get multiplied by 80 to produce the actual dimensions of the room. Let me show you. One way to do this is that we will just calculate how long and how wide the room is in reality and then go from that to scale 1 to 80. Let me show you. For example, 9 centimeters. 9 centimeters here, in reality, it will be since this is in the scale 1 to 50. In re reality, it is 450 centimeters. And then, if we take this and change it to scale 1 to 80, it is 80 times smaller. We need to divide this by 80. And we get 5.625 centimeters. Okay, so this dimension will be just 5.625 centimeters, 5.6 approximately, in the new floor plan. It will be smaller. And you do the same with this one. However, it happens to be just half of this. So, let me draw this rectangle here. This will be about 5.6 centimeters, and this, of course, will be about 2.8 centimeters, just being half of that. I will also show you another way to solve this problem. If you if you can figure out that changing from this scale to this scale means that it will actually shrink, it will get smaller, then you can look at these numbers 50 and 80 and get the scale, get the scale ratio when we are changing this to this. We are shrinking this to this in the ratio of 8 to 5, okay? The ratio between these two is actually 8 to 5, getting it from the 80 to 50. So, if you hadn't solved it already, you could then use a proportion. So let's imagine we haven't solved it already. Let's say this is our unknown side and we have two similar figures here. We will write a proportion 8 to 5. This ratio is equal to 9 to x. Just make sure that there's the bigger to smaller here and bigger to smaller here. And then we have 8x equals 45, and x equals 45 over 8, which is the same calculation as here, 450 over 80 or 45 over 8. So we will get the same result, of course. Okay, we're all done with these problems and I hope it was helpful.